Been sold art is a nuclear time bomb on your self-esteem. It will cut you open year over year until you have no confidence left. But that ends today as we unravel the mystery of pricing your art. The first level of pricing your art is a very easy beginner method. It's a mathematical equation that you probably already heard before. It goes as follows. The amount of hours that you worked on a particular piece multiplied by your hourly rates plus the material cost, shipping costs and all of that stuff. And so let's say you have an artwork and you worked 50 hours on this particular piece, you want to be paid 20 euro an hour, then that is a thousand euro. And let's say your material cost, shipping costs are 150 euro, then that is 1150 euro that you will charge. Now, if you will be selling this in a gallery that takes 50% commission, then you will double this 2300 euro for your art. Now, this is a very easy method. It's also a very boring one and a very beginner oriented one. It doesn't actually work in the art world. In the art world, the prices are not determined by hourly rates. On top of that, if you are a beginner artist, it's going to be very hard to sell your art at 1,150 euro. And so we need an other pricing strategy, a pricing strategy that can be adaptive to our personal situation. So let's go to the second level of pricing your art, a little bit more advanced, a little bit more for pro artists. In the second level of pricing your art, you want to become aware of all the things that influence the price of your artwork and then price your artwork accordingly. So let's go over some of the elements that have an influence on the price of your work. The first thing that will influence your price are exhibitions. If you've had exhibitions, your art will be worth more. If you didn't have exhibitions, it will be worth less. And the particular type of exhibitions you've had will also have an impact. A group show will obviously have less of an impact or less of a positive impact on your price than a solo show or than a show in a museum, etc. Et the second thing that will have influence are the printed or written things about your work. Nowadays with the online landscape, online blogs do matter to some extent. Now again here, not all articles are going to have the same amount of impact. If you have an article in let's say Friese magazine, it will have a bigger impact than if you have an article in a local magazine that nobody has ever heard of. Now, if you are featured on the front page, it will obviously have a bigger impact than somewhere on page 66 or something. And then another thing to take into account are the critics that are writing about your work. If there's a famous critic writing about your work, then that is massive. If there is a random student that's 24, just came out of college and writes an article about your work, then that is obviously going to have less impact. Unless that student becomes some kind of massive critic 20 years later or something. Another thing that will have an impact is the collectors that your art is featured in. If your art is featured in famous collections from famous collectors, then that is obviously going to have a big impact. If it is featured in collections from museums, same thing. If it is featured in the collection of your aunt, well, less of a thing. Another thing that will have an impact are famous people. If famous people have bought your work and present your work in their room, in their house, on Instagram, then that is going to have an impact. And that impact is obviously going to be positive. Now, you start to get the idea. There are a lot of things that influence the price of your work. I could make an exhaustive list and spend a half an hour in the middle of this video just going over all of the things. I'm not going to do that because that would be boring, but I will include a somewhat exhaustive list with over 70 things all the way at the end of the video. Let's go forward. For now, it's just important that you understand that there are elements that will have an impact on your price, that you have to be aware of those elements to incorporate that in your pricing strategy. And so let's give a particular example to solidify these ideas a little bit. Let's say you have a series of artworks and all the artworks in this series are of the same size, the same style, the same quality, everything is the same. But a couple of these artworks have been featured in magazines. These are your favorite. You sent them to particular critics who wrote about it. A couple of these artworks were featured in exhibitions and things like that. Now, even though you spent the same amount of time on all of these paintings, some of them will be priced higher because they are simply worth more. Now, once we start to understand these principles, we also have to understand the context in which it takes place because the context will have an equally important impact on the price of your art. So let's talk about this with the contrast principle, a psychological trick. It's going to make everything clear. In order to explain the contrast principle, let's take a particular example. Let's say you have three buckets with water. 
the right bucket is extremely hot water, the middle bucket is just room temperature, the left bucket is extremely cold water. Now take your hands and put them all the way right bucket and all the way left bucket. In your fancy you don't actually have to do that. Now you hold them in there for two minutes and after two minutes you want to take them out and put both of them in the middle bucket. Now what is going to happen? Well the right bucket was extremely hot and now your hands in the middle bucket it will feel extremely cold. The left hand was in cold water goes into the middle bucket and now it feels extremely warm. Now this is very strange because both of your hands are in the same bucket of water yet one feels very hot the other one feels very cold. Now why is this the case something that you intuitively already understand of course it's because of the contrast principle it comes from warm or from cold and then subsequently the neutral water feels hot or cold. And so you have to apply this idea in the art world as well. Let's say you sell a particular painting at 3k, $3,000, 3,000 euro in London. Now in London 3000 is not gonna feel like a lot. If you would sell that same painting three weeks later at a local art fair in Bangladesh then $3,000 is gonna feel like a lot. Way too much for an emerging artist. And so depending on the context your painting will be perceived as very cheap or very expensive unless you change the pricing of your art accordingly. Now understanding this contrast principle also allows us to determine whether or not a particular price of a particular artist in a particular gallery is the actual price. Let's say we go to a particular gallery and we see large big scale works of a particular artist that has the same track record as us, that has the same amount of awards, the same amount of magazines, everything. And their large pieces are being sold for $20,000 and their smaller pieces are being sold for $3,000. Now what you might say in that scenario is well this artist is selling at 20k price points so I should price my art at 20k price points. Now what you don't realize or potentially don't realize is that this gallery sells smaller works. They don't sell a lot of bigger works. They have a collector base that is searching for smaller works and the reason they priced the big paintings at 20k was to have that contrast principle. Because now the big works make the small works look very cheap, which was the whole point. They didn't want to sell the big works, they wanted to use the big works to make the smaller works look cheaper so that they would sell more smaller works. If you don't understand the contrast principle and you go to this gallery and you take these prices over and now you price your art at 20k price points, which is way too high, then you're not gonna sell anything. Now at this point you might be thinking, well Dries, if I have to take into account 70 elements that have an influence on my price as well as the contrast principle, the context in which my art is displayed all of the time, then I'm gonna spend a lot of time, weeks, just on determining my price. This is way too much, this is way too difficult. And if that is how you feel, then you're definitely onto something. And so there is a third level of pricing, which we will now explain. When it comes to pricing your art, a lot of people think that it's extremely important, especially beginner artists. They don't know how to price their art. They've never sold work. Perhaps they sold a couple of works, but that's not enough to establish an actual price point. And so it's one big mess. And the good news is that pricing your art matters way less than you think. It's actually not that important for beginner artists. Because here's the thing. For established artists, they have established price points. Beginner artists don't have that. And so what does this mean? Well, let's say you are a dealer and you are searching for particular art that is underpriced in strange corners of the marketplace so that you can then buy that work and then sell it at a discount to particular collectors who want that type of work, then that is a logical strategy because you want to increase your client base because for example, you're a beginner dealer and by offering art under the price, you are giving them a service and so you're building that relationship out. That is possible because there is an established price point for these artists. For beginner artists, that is just not the case. And so as a beginner artist, you have to understand that pricing your art is partially rational but it's also partially invented. It's partially a little bit fluffy. People don't want to admit that. And the reality is that that is just the case. On top of that, the market is so saturated that as a beginner artist, it is very unlikely that you will actually sell your art for what it is worth. That's just the way it is. And so what you have to do is instead of focusing on pricing your art correctly, 
focus on increase the prices of your art focus on the things that matter that will build your career such as building a community building relationships with collectors trying to develop some kind of sales habit some kind of sales strategy and just build your reputation upwards instead of focusing on the price and be okay with for example, not selling anything in the first two years. That's completely normal. The first two years that I offered my art for sale when I didn't have an official business yet, I didn't sell shit. And that is absolutely okay. If you focus on the things that matter more, in the end, you will be selling way more than those people who are fully focused on pricing their art. As promised, on the screen, you have a list of all the things that will impact the price of your work. Study this list and please understand that I could have, if I wanted to, turn this list into a PDF mini book and charge you $4.95 for it. I didn't do that. I want to make as much things as possible for free. But if you have the resources, please consider giving this video a super thanks the price of a coffee is more than enough. That said, get the hell out of here.